the message itself was entitled, Behold the Goodness and Severity of God. All right, so the point we want to make from last week's message, in that message we learned that judgment begins at the house of God. Why? Because we know the truth. God has taught us the truth. Amen. Amen. Second point, we talked about the wilderness. And the wilderness is where God proves and tries us. The wilderness is a place where the believers are separated from the unbelievers. There's a lot that happens in the wilderness. And God had left on record Israel's journey into the wilderness. It was left on record for a reason. And it behooves you to study it and to understand it. Third point was the New Testament church, the early church, apostated and were backslidden. They went on to become the universal church now called Catholic Church or Catholicism. The Revelation calls it Babylon. Those that did not hold to the truth. Amen. Amen. And those that held to the truth, they were in hiding. They had to meet in caves, in fields, wherever they could meet to worship God. Mm -hmm. Because the church was under persecutions. Amen. The fourth point, the devil, the revelation describes him as the dragon. He was put into a bottomless pit through the preaching of the gospel. And then we see that he comes out, not as the dragon anymore, but he comes out as a swarm of locusts, which was Mohammedism, a Muslim religion. God used the symbols of locusts coming out of that pit, looking like dark smoke, to show how many they were and how rapid they grew and swept over Jerusalem, Egypt, Persia, North Africa, Spain, and within a short time, Western Asia and North Africa became Muslim territories. They tormented the Catholic Church for 1,260 years. When you read where they uh, tormented them for 42 months, you take 42 times 30, and you still get 1,260 years. And at that time, what was called Constantinople, a Christian edifice where Christians dwelt and have held their services, after a while, the Ottoman religion of the Ottoman people, they, sit, they set siege against Constantinople and they overtook it. And then it's now where most Muslims today go for their Mecca journey. And when they pray, they turn their face toward Mecca. So they took the edifice that was erected by Constantine to serve for Christian worship, the Muslims took it. And so now, even today, it is where they journey for Mecca. My mind. And so what we found here is this, that apostated church that did not hold to the truth but professed to know God, mm -hmm. God chastened them through the Muslim faith. And the scripture says that we are the salt of the earth, mm -hmm. but when the salt has lost its savor, it's good for nothing but to be trodden underfoot. Amen. And if you ever read history, 
you'll find that before they laid siege on Constantinople, they used to tear down their idols and make fun of them. They had no tolerance for Christianity because Christianity was setting a false image. They were teaching people to bow down to idols mm -hmm. and to obey indulgences. That's why today, most Muslims that are really orthodox Muslims, they hate Christianity. But that hatred grew from Mohammed, who Amen. had no tolerance for bowing down to idols. Mm -hmm. And that hatred has grown today. And there is a hatred between Christians and Muslims. Amen. Amen. And so we need to make sure we mark it and know it. That when we belong to God, we must obey God. Amen. We have to, our actions have to match up with our testimony. Because judgment begins at the house of God. When you look at Revelations 9, 19 through 21, the scripture says, even though they were chastened and tormented by that Ottoman Empire, he says, and the, and the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. You see, they were just inundated with idols in that Catholic church, and they're still inundated. Neither repented they of their murders or their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. They did not repent. Amen. You see, God, he goes the distance. There's a time when, when we come to him as babes in Christ and he works with us to, in a, such a loving way to teach us. But after he knows that you know better, and you just continue not to do right, but then there's a time when that word begins to uh, change. It, instead of it being a flowing river or a calming rain, it'll come as hell mm -hmm. Amen. and brimstone. Amen. It'll fight against you, and so. No matter what he did, they would not repent. So this was the fate of the disobedient church of God people. Those who profess to know God, but in works they deny him, who made the whole world drunk with the wine of their fornication. And for some of you that don't understand that, when we give our hearts to God and then we let the devil have his way in our life, then we will be considered committing adultery, spiritual adultery. That's right. Amen. 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 And so that's what they call that apostate church, they call her the great whore. Amen. Because she committed fornication. And so, and it says that the whole world was made drunk through their teaching, teaching the wrong thing. Yeah. Meaning they, he, they confused them. Mm -hmm. The revelator called them Babylon, equating them with the confusion that happened at the Tower of Babel. Amen. You see, we have salvation <laughs> through Jesus Christ, but our salvation is a no-soul salvation. Amen. It's, there is no secret about holiness of God. Amen. 
Paul said, if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. Right. Amen. Amen. But to those of us who have given our hearts to God, it is open unto us. Amen. We just need to study, seek him out, and pray. If you take your Bibles and turn with me to Revelation 18, 1 through 8, and we're still talking about the goodness and the severity of God. Yes. Revelations 18, 1 through 8. Yes. And after these things, I saw another great angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. Mm -hmm. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, yes. and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, mm -hmm. and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works. <clears throat> and the cup which she had filled, filled to her double, how much she had glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judges her. Amen. So God was angry. Because they were confusing the nations. And if any of you know anything about Catholicism, they also kill many Christians that would not go along, that would not bow to me. They were rich because they made money off of people, especially through those indulgences. And so God says he is going to punish her, and his judgment did come against her. So judgment does begin at the house of God. Judgment can be poured out on the Christian movement, I want you to hear me good. Judgment can be poured out on a congregation. Judgment can be poured out on us individually. Amen. 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 When we profess to know him, but in works, we deny him. Mm -hmm. And when God knows that he has worked with you, he has walked with you, he has manifested himself, that he is real, he is true, and you continue to go back to sinful ways. God's judgment will come upon you. Why? Because he that knoweth to do good and doeth not to him, it is a sin. It is better not to be saved than to be a hypocrite. That's right. Amen. Even the Lord said, I, I worry that you were cold or hot. Amen. But because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spill you out of my mouth. Amen. You can put on a facade in front of the saints, but God knows your heart. Amen. He sees and knows everything you do. Right. The Lord is not sending these messages so that you can sit here and feel good. He's helping us to understand what is happening in the world we live in today. Amen. What is happening on the clock of ages, even as we speak. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. If you take your Bible and turn with me to Hebrews 12, 23, 
through 29. And before he reads that, I want to say this. God took us through <coughs> journey last week in history mm -hmm. and the revelations of Jesus Christ of the church for a reason. The same thing that happened, if you can go back just a, even a little further, if you go back to the time of literal Israel when they were in the wilderness, there was a separation going on in the wilderness. Mm -hmm. We know that those that were over the age of 20, their carpet caucuses died in their wilderness. Mm -hmm. And even after they came out of the wilderness and they became a great nation, they were powerful and God was with them. There was another separation when he divided those tribes. He cut them down. The 12 became 10. Amen. Amen. And he only worked with those last two tribes, which was what? Judah and Benjamin. And so by the time that we open up, uh, or we close out with Malachi, we hear God saying to him, he says, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed. And what he's saying is, I promise to bring the Messiah through this lineage. Amen. I'm committed to that. But your works and how you have done and acted, I could just wipe you off the map. But because I'm not going to change, I'm going to keep working with you until I bring the Messiah through. And when he brought the Messiah through, Amen. Mm -hmm. John at the river of Jordan told him the axe is laid at the root. God not going to put up with foolishness in the moment. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so the Lord is <coughs> awakening me and causing me to remember the dreams, the revelations that he showed me early in 2000 leading up to 2000, that history is about to repeat itself. Um, God said in the New Testament in Hebrews that he is not only going to shake earth, but he's going to shake heaven also. Um, so if you read Micah beginning with that 23rd verse. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, mm -hmm. and to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. See that ye refuse not him that speaketh, for if they escape not who refuse him that speak, spake on earth, much more shall not we escape and we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven, whose voice then shook the earth. But now he had promised, saying, Yet once more I shake not earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signified the removing of those things that are shaken, as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. So God is saying, I'm not only going to shake earth, I'm going to shake heaven. And Jesus leaves on record a word to us found in Matthew 13, 41 through 43. And it says, the Son of Man shall send forth his angels, they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. 
Then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. It's Jesus' job to keep the church pure. Amen. And people are using the term grace to fit whatever it is they want to do. Amen. And continue in sin and say grace covering this. All right. But no, see, this is the day of grace. Amen. What God is willing to work with you and have patience for you, but not for you to deliberately knowing that you're being sinful and you're trying to use grace right. as you get out of jail car. Amen. See, God is not confused. He know them that belong to him Amen. and them that don't. Mm -hmm. That's right. He knows them that heard the truth and he said, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart as in the day of provocation. And he knows those that have hardened their hearts to the truth. <clears throat> and so now there has come a time where God is shaking. Mm -hmm. Not my word, but his. Amen. He said, make sure we don't refuse him. He promised, once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. He wasn't talking about the sky where the clouds at. Amen. When you read the Bible in the Gospels, you hear him saying, and the kingdom of heaven is like unto. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He's talking about the church. Amen. I'm going to shake heaven too. Mm -hmm. And see, that, that helps us to understand when we read the parables of the man sitting in there with the wrong garment so mm -hmm. I said, friend, how did you get in here having on the wrong garment? He was speechless because he knew better. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said, bind him hand and foot and cast him out into darkness. Amen. That's going on right now. It's happening right now. And God is saying the same thing he told the church, the seven churches in the Revelation. He told them to repent. Amen. I come quickly and I'll remove your candlestick. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you won't even know I came to move. Right. That's right. You're going to keep on carrying on the same way that you've been carrying on. Mm -hmm. you, won't, you won't even know that I done took my life from you. Mm -hmm. All right. This thing is real. Amen. Salvation is real. Mm -hmm. And salvation works. Right. Amen. 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 God is separating the wheat from the tares, even as I speak. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord is inviting us and he's admonishing us to make sure you enter in at the straight gate. Amen. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. All right. And many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. When you look up those words straight, straight, S-T-R-A-I-T. Mm -hmm means straight. So if any of you ever had a complaint, they're too strict, look up the word straight. Rigorous. Narrow. Then I ever call you narrow-minded because you don't go along with it and everything. Mm -hmm. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Limited in space or time. Straight, causing distress, difficult, constricted, 
tight. Mm. There's no room for foolishness. Amen. Amen. He said the way is straight. Praise God. And it's now. Mm -hmm. And I am so blessed that God would visit me in a dream and show me how he caused that gate to flip back. Mm -hmm. And that passageway was narrow. Uh, but he was helping us to get through mm -hmm. that narrow way. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And he is helping us today that we have to forsake this world. We have to wear this world as a loose gun. Mm -hmm. And some of us walk so close to the world, mm -hmm. Amen. losing your identity. Yeah. Amen. Because you don't want to be different from the world. All right. Many have gone to sleep mm -hmm. and don't even know. Mm. My Lord, God is shaking and he's exhorting us to enter ye in at the what? Straight gate. At the straight gate. The gate is an opening in a wall or fence mm. or a city. An entrance. Right. It often has defensive structures. Yeah. And so we hear God speaking to us in Isaiah, the 26th chapter, mm -hmm. and he tells us, oh, open ye the gate, that the righteous nation that keepeth the truth may enter in. Right. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Amen. He said, and for walls, he said he would give us salvation. Yeah. For walls God. and bull walls. So when you enter into the kingdom of God, the church of God that Jesus built, you are entering into a defense city. Amen. And Jesus said, I am the door. And if any man enter in by me, he shall be saved. Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes. But you've got to hold to God's unchanging hand and stay and abide in him right. to keep your salvation mm -hmm. because the devil is on the prop yes. and he'll tell you when he gets you all by yourself mm -hmm. and the word of God will come up before you to help you from doing some kind of wrong mm -hmm. and then here come the devil to say well he didn't really mean it like that <laughs> And then you go and sin. Mm -hmm. Just like Miss Eve. Mm -hmm. You won't surely die. We can't listen to the devil. Exactly. We can't give him our ear. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so God is saying, walk in the spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. You have to be intentional about serving God. Amen. When you get up every morning, you have to make a conscious decision. I need a covering today. Amen. I need to meet with God. Yes. I need him to order my steps. Yes. I need him to go before me. Yes. I need him to make me equal to my task. Yes. Yes. And if anything come against me suddenly, I need him to hold my step. Yes. Amen. 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 The young lady sang the song, when I go through the fire, you're with me. Amen. I know you're my portion. Yes. You need him to hold your hand. Yes. You need him to give you wisdom to make decisions. Yes. And you learn how to wait on him. You learn how to wait on him. Yes, Amen. Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Walk in the Spirit. And you won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. But you got to walk in the Spirit. Amen. You walking in your flesh, 
And only things on your mind are things that pertain to this word. The devil gonna get you. Amen. You gonna get God. Amen. Because you're not being watchful. Amen. And then you're gonna be somewhere looking sad, wondering how did that happen? You did it to yourself. Because the same Bible I got, amen. Some of y'all might have other versions. But you need to put them away and give King James version. Amen. 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 We got the same Bible. Mm -hmm. Same Bible. And so we're not going to have any excuse. You are strong enough if you count this. The only thing the devil can hold you hostage by is his mouth. Amen. He will try to hold you hostage with his mouth. Making you afraid to do, telling you what you can't do. You just ain't going to make it. You just lost forever. You're a little weakling. Yeah. And you let him tell you all of that. My Bible tells me if any man be in Christ, he is a new preacher. Amen. Right. All things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Amen. Amen. Right. And I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Yeah. And it is God who is at work in me, both to will and to do. Amen. I don't have to worry about it. I just need to trust Him and obey Him. Some of us sneak in. All right. With our disobedience. Think. No human eyes see. Mm -hmm. All right. When God's ministers are right with him, he, he, he get him out. They can see you from their house. Oh. I'm Amen. telling you what I know. Amen. <laughs> and see your spirit when they lay eyes on you. They ain't going to say nothing. Just pray for it. Time out for being sneaky. Uh -oh. Amen. Amen. Once God reveals truth to us and makes us acquainted with him, he expects us to, through the spirit, triumphant over all of this world below. And to bring our bodies under the what? Subjection of Christ. Amen. 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 Now, if you didn't get this part, maybe you'll get it today. Our spiritual development comes by way of suffering. Amen. Don't nobody want to go through that. They want what they want. But your development is going to come by way of suffering. He said after you've suffered a while. Then I'm going to strengthen you. That is you. I'm going to make it. But only after you suffer a while. Amen. Your suffering is because this flesh wants what it wants. Mm -hmm. And you can't see no other way than the way you used to do things. Right. And if you don't submit yourself to the trial, to the test, mm -hmm. You're going to fix your own situation. You're not going to humble yourself. Because you're going you, you, you're going to want some comfort. You, you want this thing off of me. But it's there to kill you out. Help you not to be fully yourself. Amen. It's a blessing when God sit with you and take time with you. Because we some hard-headed, yeah. stubborn, stiff-necked folks Amen. without God Amen. and don't want nobody to tell us nothing. Yes. But when God get a hold to you, Father. amen, yeah. and he's helping you to humble yourself, mm -hmm. you don't need to fight against it. Amen. Amen. The scripture says all things work for the what good, good to them that love the Lord. Amen. Quit talking about why me. How come this happening to me? Mm 
Why not you? I'm glad Jesus didn't say why me. How come this happening to me? He said, I lay down my life. And we need to lay down our lives for Christ. It'll be over with after a while. After a while, it'll be over with. Trying to act like you said. This is going out to more than these congregations. So I don't know who you're talking about. Amen. I'm talking to who I'm talking to. Amen. 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 According to Philippians 1, 29 and 30, he says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but also to suffer for his sake, having the same conflict which you saw in me, and now here to be in me. Our trials, they come to make us strong. When God takes us into his wilderness of chastening, it is for our good. When you read that Old Testament, and I believe it's, if it's not Deuteronomy, it's Exodus, the eighth chapter, when God was talking to Israel after they had come out of the wilderness, he said, I took you into that wilderness to prove you, to see if you would obey me, to see if you would trust me. I suffered no water to be there. I suffered you to be hungry. God did that on purpose. So they can learn how to trust him. So they can learn that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And some of us, when we have gotten saved, it seemed like everything disappeared. Mm -hmm. The money that you enjoy disappeared. The friends that you used to prop up on, they gone. And now you got to do things right. You got to be honest. You got to put in a hard day's work. Not sneaking off. Amen. You got to tell the truth. Praise God. That's right. And so now they put put pulling your hours back. And the car done tore up. You ain't got enough money for growth. Mm -hmm. Man should not live. Mm -hmm. By bread alone. Mm -hmm. But by every word that proceeds out of mouth of God. All right. things work together for good to them that love the Lord. That's right. And what God is trying to teach you to do is that you need to wait on him. Amen. You need to cry out, Abba, Father, I need you. You need to trust him and see what he'll do. Amen. You need to stop thinking about tomorrow and what I'm going to eat tonight. All right. If it be that you've been obedient to him, you think you can outdo God? All right. You think you can put his back to the wall and say you didn't do what you said you're going to do? <laughs> All right. You're not going to find that kind of a situation. The only time you'll find that kind of situation, you haven't done what you're supposed That's to That's right. Do. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness yep. and all the things that you need, not what you want, will be added unto you. Amen. That's what he said. And said, when you are obedient to him, you standing on his word. Amen. I'm hungry, but I'm going to wait on it. All right. Amen. You said you're going to bless me. Amen. Amen. I remember when our cupboards were bad. Money was scarce. Amen. Amen. I ain't going to be shamed. <laughs> It turned out to a testimony for God. Amen. He Amen. got the glory. Amen. And I cooked up the children some grits. I think we had some grits. And I called myself trying to fix them up. Put stuff in them. Mm -hmm. 
children just didn't want them. They didn't like it. But God moved on the sister's heart. I didn't tell her my situation. God told her. All right. She showed up on my doorstep with two bags of groceries. Amen. Y'all hear me? I believe. Yes. He's my healer. Yes. I believe he's my portion. Yes. He is all I need. Amen. And so when God put you in your wilderness, mm. you need to go ahead and die. Amen. Die the death. And wait on him. Amen. See what happens. Amen. Amen. Your trial is coming to make you. And you can skip it if you want to. But you're going to find yourself by yourself. All right. We're going to go on a little further. I got a time set that I'm going to cut this off. Praise the Lord. When you go through God's wilderness chastening, he teaches you how to have faith, trust him. He teaches you how to be selfless and how to pray and know him. He is, whether you were a person that had devotions and knew how to pray, once you begin to know him, you begin to realize, oh, I need to spend more time with him. Yeah. There's something to this prayer thing. I need to pray more. Yeah. And you find that there's a clearing of your head. All of them voices and thoughts, God clears it for you. Amen. And then you're able to discern between the voice of God and the voice of the devil. Right. Amen. Amen. When you take time out with God, we learn how to quit ourselves yes. and wait on the Lord. How to depend upon his word. And we learn these things by way of suffering. Amen. You see, your suffering shouldn't cause you to sit somewhere acting like you about to have a nervous breakdown. Amen. It should cause you to do some neology. Amen. Where you get on your knees Amen. and you cry out to God. And you do some crying. Amen. You see, that's what's wrong with some of us. We try to be so hard. And we, we got this. I'm going to be all right. Some of us need to be broken down. And you know how you get that hard cry where you're snotting and, and your face looking ugly? Where you're calling on God? Amen. That's when you're really getting down to some prayer. Amen. Amen. That's where he comes to meet you. He will meet you there. When you humble yourself. He will not walk with the proud of the scornful. And we have to humble ourselves to walk with God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Amen. When you are full of yourself, you got desires on you, you try to fake it. You can't fake it. Mm -hmm. You need God to deliver you. That's right. Amen. And you need to get on down, get on down, and say, I can't do this by myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to sin against you. Lord, I need you to deliver me. Amen. Don't you know he'll hear your cry? And he'll come to your rescue. Amen. When you go through God's wilderness of chastening, you learn how to brighten your tongue. Amen. Man. You learn how to bring your whole body under the subjection of Christ. Yes. James says if a man is able to bridle his tongue, he should also be able to bridle the whole body. Amen. Bring that whole body under the subjection of Christ. All right. <clears throat> you see, salvation is real. We are not church, just church goers right. and pew warmers. Mm -hmm. We're the born again, spirit-filled body of believers Amen. that love the Lord. Amen. 
even though we walk in the flesh, scripture says we don't war after the flesh. Amen. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strong Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter what the devil used to make you do, right. but when you're in Christ, he can't make you do nothing anymore. Right. Amen. Amen. Casting down imagination. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Amen. I don't know how many of you have learned how when the devil is bombarding your mind with thoughts, sometimes ungodly stuff. But Christ will teach you how to recognize the devices of Satan Amen. to rebuke that devil. Amen. And sometimes you have to square off with him and say, devil, I know that's you. Right. Yeah. And I'm not receiving nothing you sing. Get behind me. Matter of fact, get out my house Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. This is the authority that he has given us and we need to use it. Amen. And stop acting weakly. Amen. 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 We are overcomers. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Some have missed this phase of their growth. Not because of God, but because they didn't want to humble themselves to suffer. Amen. And they don't Amen. want to be corrected. Amen. This is what God meant when he says, my spirit will not always strive with man. Sometimes we wonder how in the world the Lord put up with me. I do. In making me, I had to wonder. Sometimes I get tired of my own self. Praise the Lord. But he is working with you and he's not condemning you because you didn't know. But he's saying you can do it. And I'm here to help you. Amen. Come on. I know you feel bad. The devil's going to ride you. And make you feel like throw in the towel. Just let it go. All right. But don't let it go. My promise is true. I said I'll never leave you. nor forsake you. Amen. And I will go with you even to the end of the world. All right. And be a good cheer. I have overcome Amen. Amen. But God says, my spirit is not going to always strive with you. If you come out of God's chastening rod the same way you went in, you're not going to make it. Amen. When we won't believe his word, and we won't let God's word correct us, and we won't die to our flesh, then we're not going to be able to produce fruit unto holiness. Mm. You can write it down. It's just not going to happen. Proverbs 15 and 10 says, Correction is grievous unto him that forsaketh the way. You know you didn't obey that one point that God made. After that, everything else get on your nerve. Amen. Some folks telling you, what the scriptures say. I don't need them telling me nothing. All right. And they came to you in love. Yeah, but now you done got an attitude. Mm -hmm. He said, and he that hated reproof shall die. That's Proverbs 15 and 10. Yeah, Proverbs 29 and 1. He that been often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and that without remedy. Mm -hmm. That's Bible. Mm -hmm. That's Bible. Mm -hmm. We're going to take this last 10 minutes. I had purpose to get through by 12. I think I'm doing good. Yeah. But I see now I'm not going to finish this message. Mm -hmm. right. But we're going to try to take this last 10 minutes. Turn your Bibles. Mike, I need you to help me with this. <laughs> 2 Corinthians 4. This is one of my favorite scriptures. 
Second Corinthians 4, beginning with verse 6. Second Corinthians chapter 4, starting in verse 6. Through 18. Mm -hmm. Through 18. For God, who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our body. Mm -hmm. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made manifest in our mortal flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. We having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I have believed, therefore I have spoken, have I spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up also us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. Oh. Paul is writing a letter here that's helping us to know that when we go through and God is making us, he says we have a treasure in earthen vessels in this body that the excellency of the power may be what? God and not of us. Yeah. None of us are going to be able to say, oh, I did that on my own. Amen. No, you won't. It was because God in you is at work to help you. Then trouble is going to come your way, but you're not going to get distressed about it. We are perplexed, but we're not in despair. And he says persecuted, but not forsaken. Amen. They that live godly shall suffer persecution. That's right. Amen. You don't have to go looking for nothing. All right. Trouble will come and find you. Amen. Matter of fact, trouble going to single you out. Amen. That one right there. Amen. Yeah, her right there. Him right there. Amen. We're not going to pay them right. We're going to talk about them. Amen. We want them to hear us talking about mm -hmm. them. Y'all hear me? Mm -hmm. Trouble gonna find you because you named the name of a saint. Amen. But he said, happy are ye when men persecute you and speak all manner evil against you. Right. You need to count it all joy Amen. that God has chosen you to go through. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. He said, always bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our body. Amen. You need to bear the marks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What you going through? What you been through? How many things that hurt you so bad, but you forgave and you let it go? Yeah. All of us got a story to tell. Yes. Yeah. When we look at it, and I thank God for my devotion as I was reading devotion a week gone by, it was talking about how that the patriarchs of old went through. Talked about how Mary and Martha were stressing because Jesus wasn't there when their brother had passed. They said, Lord, you had to bring him. He wouldn't have died. But he let them know this was for the glory of oh God. Amen. Amen. How many are stressing? Because right. God didn't come when you wanted him to. God doesn't do things just because you want it. He's going to get some glory out of it. All right. Amen. 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 Joseph, when he was sold by his brethren, don't you think that hurt him? Amen. And then he was lied on by an adulterous woman. Yeah, man. Then he went to prison. Don't you think they hurt him? Yeah. He bears the marks. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. 
He banished the mobs. And guess what? They were waiting on the Messiah. Amen. And they went to sleep, not yet having received the promise. Amen. But even without the Holy Ghost dispensation to indwell us, they blow out the mobs. They waited. Amen. And they suffered in silence. Amen. But their faith was unwavering. Yo, we got some we got some growing to do. Amen. We need to stop being foolish and thinking everything's supposed to be fixed for us. Mm -mm. It's not gonna be fixed for us. Amen. They bore the marks. What you buried. He says, For we which live are always delivered unto what death for Jesus' sake. That the life also of Jesus, come on now might be made manifest in our mortal flesh Amen. while you yet living. So then death worketh in us, but life in you. Yeah. We having the same spirit of faith, according as written, I believe, and therefore have I spoken. Amen. Amen. He said, knowing that he would raise up the Lord Jesus, shall raise up us also by Jesus. Amen. And shall present us with you. Mm -hmm. Let me help y'all with something. Don't y'all go off on the tantrum talking about the rapture coming. Amen. God is not going to come and get some and leave the rest. All right. All right. Those that he bring with him are those that have already died in him who were in the first resurrection. Amen. But when he come that second time that trumpet blows he bringing them with him. All right. Them that are dead are going to raise up. Those of us that are alive will be changed in one moment. Amen. And all of the church of God is going to be with the Lord. All right. Amen. 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 Ain't nobody going to be left here. Amen. But we supposed to have the end of the world yesterday. All right. <laughs> Foolishness, I tell you. Amen. He's coming back. Coming back, and all of us gonna be with him, the old and the new. Amen. We all going to heaven together. Amen. All right. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. 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 Verse fifteen. For all things are for your sakes, mm -hmm. that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Yes. For which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward, inward man is renewed day by day. Hold it. Quit worrying about this body. Amen. I remember I was worried about the thing I had to go through, and I said, Lord, this, this is going to kill me. He said, that's what I want you to do, die. Die to yourself. Yeah, Amen. Amen. So you may feel like you're aging. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. Amen. You're getting real tired. But keep on keeping it. Amen. Keep on keeping them free. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, yes. working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory, while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Are eternal. You got to stop looking at this world. Amen. Begin to look at the things that are not seen. Mm -hmm. Take your eyes off of this world. Amen. If you keep your eyes on the world, you're going to lose your heavenly home. Job 5 and 17 says, Behold, happy is the man whom God corrected. Mm -hmm. Therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. God is saying, what more could I have done? What more can I do? God is not willing that any should perish, Amen. but that all should come to repentance. Amen. God loves us, loved one. Amen. But just as sure as I stand before you, the dreams and the revelations that God sent me coming up to 2000, 
He's reminding me that war is coming and the church that we know now one day we're going to be on foot. Meaning the way and the freedoms that we have to assemble ourselves, that's going to be taken away. We're going to be meek wherever we can meet. Some of y'all might not believe. Some of y'all didn't believe it when I told you war was coming to America and then we had 2001. Some of you might not believe me when I told you that the enemy was going to think to change laws and times that would take away our religious freedom and strike down God's eternal laws. And we're here today and it has happened. Amen. 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 I speak the truth. Mm -hmm. I lie not. Mm -hmm. And these things are coming. And God is saying, set your house in order. Trim your laps. Amen. Mm -hmm. And if you went through the wilderness and you came out the same way, repent. Yes. Say, Lord, don't leave me to myself. Don't leave me to myself. If you check yourself and you find that you're stubborn and your heart is hard, Lord help us. You say, Lord, I need help. Don't leave me this way. Lord, forgive me. Give me another chance. Let us stay.